Welcome to Calculus. In this part one video, we're going to learn limits and derivatives. Okay, so calculus. Uh, first, we're going to ask some questions. What is a calculus? Who created this calculus? Why should we study calculus? And where can we use this calculus? Okay, let me first ask the question: Who created this calculus? Yes. So the cre uh, calculus is created by the two great mathematicians, Newton and Leibniz. This one is Newton and Leibniz. Okay, now what is a calculus? A calculus is a mathematical study of change. So uh, we can draw a graph of the distance covered with respect to time. So distance is changing with respect to time. Then we can apply calculus. Uh, similarly, the area of a circle uh, gets changes when increase the radius. So again, there we can apply uh, calculus so everything there is a change we can use a calculus calculus has a mainly two branches differential calculus or derivatives integral calculus or integrals differential calculus is used to find the slope or instantaneous rate of change integral calculus is used to find the area under the curve okay suppose we have a graph then differential calculus will help us uh, will help us to find how much the graph is increasing or decreasing. An integral calculus will help us to find the area under the curve. Okay, where can we use this calculus? And calculus has uh, so many great applications in our real life. It is used in economics, used in medical lines, astrophysics, chemistry, engineering, aerodynamics and so on. Now the topic that we're going to cover will be limits and continuity. So first, what is a limit? Okay, let uh, let us take a function f of x equals to x plus two. And the question: What is the limit of the function f of x when x is approaching towards one? So here we have a tabular column. Now, when we take x value smaller and smaller, very close to one. So when we decrease the x value and reaching very close to 1, then we notice that the uh, value of f of x is decreasing and decreasing and approaching very, very close to 3. Now, uh, another case, when we increase the x value and approaching very, very, very close to 1, see, we, we're going to increase the x value and approaching very close to 1. Then again, we notice that the f of x value is increase, increase, in, increases and uh, approaching very, very, very close to 3. So, from either case, we observe that when the x value is approaching very close to 1, then the value of the function is approaching very close to 3, right? So, in this function, f of x equals to x plus 2. When x value is approaching very close to 1, the, this value of the function is approaching very close to 3. Now, this number 3 is nothing but the limit of this function when x is approaching towards 1. Okay, so how do we write in limit? We write in this way. Limit when x is approaching towards 1, then the function f of x. So, limit x is approaching towards 1, the function f of x, here we have x plus 2. So in so the limit of x plus 2 when x is approaching very close to 1 is nothing but in the place where x we are going to take 1, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So this 3 is the expected value of the function when x is approaching towards 1. And this is how we write uh, so, uh, in a limit form. So, limit is nothing but the expected value of a function. Now, next question is existence of a limit, whether the limit exists at a particular point or not. A limit of the function f of x exists at x equals to a if the left hand limit at x equals to a is equals to right hand limit at x equals to a. If the left hand limit equals to right hand limit, then we say that limit exists at that point and the common value is taken as left and uh, is taken as a limit. Now, 
Next, how do we write left hand limit and right hand limit? So it is a similar uh, left hand limit at x equals to a, we are going to write this as a limit, x tends to a and we write negative of f of x. So this negative denotes that x is approaching towards a from the left. So this is how we write for left hand limit and right hand limit we write x tends to a plus f of x. Now this um, indicates that x is approaching towards a and the plus indicates that x is approaching towards a from the right. So this is how we write left hand limit and right hand limit. Now some questions we need to find both left hand limit and right hand limit but some we, uh, questions can be evaluated directly. Now the question is how can we distinguish Right. So uh, I have given two functions, one on the left and one on the right. Uh, so the question is, what is the limit of f of x as x is approaching towards 1? Now, approaching towards 1 means we have a two case. One is uh, uh, approaching towards 1 from the right. Uh, one is approaching towards 1 from the left. So, so when x is very, 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 very close to 1, means we have two cases, slightly greater than 1 and slightly less than 1. So, in the functions on the left hand side, when x value is taking slightly less than 1, again we are going to take this function. When x value is a slightly greater than 1, again we can take the same function, 3x minus 2. But on the right side, when x value is slightly greater than 1, we need to take this value x minus 5. When x value is a slightly less than 1, we need to take this value x plus 5. So when x is very close to 1, uh, we have a two case slightly greater than 1 and slightly less than 1 for this particular question. So we have to take a two different values of the function. So for this kind of a function, we need to use left hand limit and right hand limit. And this one we can find directly. So this will be limit x tends to 1 f of x is equals to limit x tends to 1 3x minus 2 equals to 3 1 equals to 1 so this will be the limit of the function on the left now the limit on the right so when x is very close to 1 from the left so we're going to write uh, negative and this we are finding left hand limit so limit x tends to 1 uh, negative that means very, very close to 1 from the left means we need to take this function right x plus 5 so the limit will be in the place of x we are going to write 1 so 1 plus 5 is equals to 6 now next is when x value is approaching towards 1 from the right means slightly greater than 1. So when x value is slightly greater than 1, we need to take the low, uh, this function x minus 5. So x minus 5 because the condition is written here. When x value is greater than 1, we need to take this function. When x value is less than or equals to 1, we need to take this function. So condition is already, uh, already written on the right side. So this will be 1 minus 5 equals to negative 4. Now we can observe that left hand limit is 6 and right hand limit is negative 4. So left hand limit is not equals to right hand limit. Therefore we can say that limit x tends to 1 of f of x does not exist. And this is how we find limit at a particular point. Okay, next. The next is, uh, the next topic is continuity. The question is, uh, is the graph continuous or not? So we will we'll be given a graph. We are going to say whether the graph is a continuous or not. So I have a two graphs, one on the left and one on the right. Now, which one do you think is a continuous graph? Yes, very good. This one is continuous. On the left is continuous. On the right is not continuous because we see a break 
in the right hand side graph right so normally uh, graphically we can say that the graph is a continuous if we can draw the graph without lifting the pen from the plane of tip so it is easy to judge if we able to draw a graph without lifting a pen then that graph will be continuous let's say x value is some a so when x equals to a and there is no y value so th this function is not continuous at this particular point a okay now we have a question f of x equals to uh, 1 when x is not e uh, equal to 0 f of x value equals to 2 when x equals to 0 now we're going to decide whether this function is a continuous or not this we can easily decide by simply plotting a graph okay we can plot when x is not equal to 0 we're going to take uh, f of x f of x is nothing but uh, y value right so when x is not equal to 0 y value is always 1 so this one x value is negative 1 negative uh, x value negative 5 y value 1 x value negative 2 y value is 1 right all this x is not equal to 0 right so when x is not equal to 0 we are getting y is equals to 1 but when x equals to 0 okay we're going to write empty So when x is again increasing, increasing, which is not equal to 0, again we are getting y equals to 1. Now when x equals to 0, then the y value is taken as 2. So when x equals to 0, there, it will, there will be a whole, right? So when x equals to 0, y value is taken as 2. Now we observe that in order to plot this uh, the graph of this function we have to lift our pen right so this function is not continuous not continuous at where at x equal to zero so we can say that f of x is not continuous at x equal to zero so at x equals to 0, we need to lift our pen, right? So this function is not continuous at x equals to 0. Okay, let me take another example. So f of x equals to 1 when x is less than or equals to 0. f of x equals to 2 when x value is greater than 0. Again, we are going to uh, conclude without this function, uh, so whether this function is continuous or not. Now so here f of x means it is a y right now we see that uh, the y value is taking as 1 when x is great, uh, less than or equal to 0 so less than or equal to 0 all this right from here it's our x value uh, from this uh, origin and to the left everything will be x uh, the x value will, will be less than or equal to 0 when from origin to the left y value is always 1 right so we're going to take y value And when x equals, uh, when x is greater than zero, then y value is uh, taking as two. So when x value is slightly greater than two, uh, instantly, drastically, it jumps up, and y value is taking as two. Right? Okay. And now this part. We say that when x value is 0, y value is 1. And when x value is uh, 0, right? Well, so there will be a hole here. So when x value is less than or equal to 0, then y value is always 1. When x value is greater than 0, then y value is taken as 2. Here we need to uh, draw a circle. When x equal to 0, y value is not 2, it's 1, right? So it's empty. So we need to draw a circle here. But when x is slightly greater than 0, then y value is 2. So from here to here. Now again, in order to draw this graph, we have to lift our pen, right? So this function is again 
not continuous but not continuous at where, which point x equal to 0 right so f of x is not continuous at x equals to 0 so far in these two questions we have approved whether the function is continuous or not by simply drawing the graph and next time we can solve or we can answer whether the function is continuous or not by not plotting graph by calculating so that's how can we do so it's easy now continuity at a point a real function f of x is said to be continuous at x uh, at some point c of its domain if if the limit extends to c of f of x exists so the first and foremost condition is limit should exist at the point c and this limit at f of x the limit of f of x when x tends to c should be equals to f of c so these are the two very important conditions so a real function f of x is said to be continuous at the point c of its domain if the limit uh, of f of x at x tends to c exists and this value the, the value of this limit should be equal to the f of c then we say that the lim uh, function is continuous at point c now the question how can we say that the limit exists at point c that one is very easy we're going to find limit x tends to c left hand limit at point c of the f of x and then uh, right hand limit of the f of x at point c and if we get this value as the same if the left hand limit value is equal to right hand limit then we can say that the limit exists and the value this common value is taking as the value or limit of the function right and this limit of the function should be equals to f of c then we can say that limit at uh, point c exists if f is not continuous at point c then we say that f is discontinuous at point c and now this point c is called point of discontinuity